Hello everyone and welcome. In 2017, Tesla said you could order and take delivery of your Tesla Semi in 2019. Well, here it is 2022 and that has not happened yet, but apparently it's going to happen this year, which leads me to this interesting internal conflict I have with Tesla in that I think cool engineering is really cool, but I also think deceptive marketing is one of the most infuriating things out there. And Tesla happens to be very good at both of these things. However, with math, you can turn deceptive marketing uh, into reality. And so that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We're gonna look at six aspects of the Tesla Semi and see whether or not the math checks out. Who's excited? Looks like Bill Gates is. Let's do this. So we're going to start out with battery size and weight because Tesla doesn't tell us what the weight of the battery is nor what the capacity of it is. And so the big challenge with an electric semi is that there is a maximum limit on how much your semi with trailer can weigh and that is 80,000 pounds. You cannot exceed this. So if your truck weighs a lot and your trailer weighs a lot and your batteries weigh a lot, well that means that's less cargo that you can take around because this is the ceiling. You cannot exceed 80,000 pounds. Well, from Tesla's impact report, they say the semi has over 500 miles of range and can get better than 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Do some simple math, 500 divided by half, and that gives you an estimated battery capacity of about 1,000 kilowatt hours, uh, assuming those two numbers are true and fairly close to reality. Now, Tesla's battery chemistry, uh, they're capable of achieving around uh, 0.275 kilowatt hours per kilogram of battery. So we simply take 1,000, divide it by 0.275, and that gives us 3,600 kilograms just for battery cells alone, or about 8,000 pounds. Now again, this is just the battery cells. So you of course need a structure for all of that. Uh, if you look at a large EV example uh, that isn't necessarily all that weight efficient, but a large EV example that can kind of give us the upper boundary of what this might weigh, the Hummer EV has a 200 plus kilowatt hour pack that weighs about 3,000 pounds. So some rough math there, if you multiply 3,000 pounds by five to get a one megawatt hour battery pack, well then you get a 15,000 pound battery pack. Now Tesla's definitely gonna be under that uh, and they're definitely gonna be over that unless they have some magic chemistry that they've created in the meantime. So I believe it'll be somewhere between these two, probably around 10 to 12,000 pounds for the battery. Now that's a lot, right? But it's not crazy and there's a couple reasons why it's not all that crazy. So the average class eight, meaning semi-truck, uh, that's how they're classified in the US, the average weight of one of these things, uh, the diesel ones, is about 17 thousand pounds uh, and about 4,000 pounds can be attributed to the engine and related components to that engine. So that is a big chunk of weight. Certainly electric motors aren't going to weigh anywhere near this, uh, but you have that really heavy battery. The other advantage that you have with electric semis is they're given a plus 2,000 pound weight limit. So an electric semi as well as a natural gas semi, uh, because these also have additional equipment that weigh more, they're allowed a ceiling of 82,000 pounds, which means you get a buffer of about 2,000 pounds extra for the EV, uh, and plus, you know, you don't have that giant heavy engine. So while it's probably gonna be slightly heavier than the semi, uh, part of it is allowed, and you still won't have too much of a reduction in cargo capacity. So as far as battery size and weight, the math actually does check out. Okay, so next let's talk about range, because Tesla says this is going to be capable of 500 miles at maximum load. And so we're gonna go over two examples here, uh, one of which is the best case scenario, make it as easy as possible for it to be able to do this, and then the other is a bit more complicated. So we need to go through a few of the variables. Tesla says the drag coefficient of this Tesla Semi is just 0.36. That is incredibly good. It's also kind of hard to believe because you don't have complete control over the trailer. If the trailer has some irregular shape to it, that has a huge impact on the drag coefficient, and that's not something you can completely control. Uh, so it's hard to get this number, but we're gonna give it to them in this case. Also, we have to look at the frontal area. Now, if you look at the standard dimensions of one of these trailers in the US, it's eight and a half feet wide and it's 13 and a half feet tall, including the tires. Uh, that's pretty much a box and it's pretty much unavoidable. You pretty much have to use this area, this box of an area as your frontal area. Now, for this example, I'm gonna give them a foot off the bottom and say that some of that air passes underneath the truck and it's not obstructed as far as frontal area. Uh, so we're gonna give them a little bit of a, of a benefit there with front 
area, uh, which we're not going to do for our second example. We're going to assume that entire rectangle. The velocity is going to be 60 miles per hour. That's what Tesla said in their reveal that they could do this at. So the semi is traveling at 60 miles per hour. Coefficient of rolling resistance of the tires uh, at just 0.005. That's extremely good. Efficiency of 95% from the battery to the wheels. That's extremely good, but it is theoretically possible in an EV. Uh, we're going to say there's no wind and there's no time spent accelerating or de decelerating. We're just at a constant 60 miles per hour going down a perfectly flat road with no wind and all of the variables happen to work out in our favor. Well, how much energy would you need in order to do that scenario for 500 miles? You would need roughly 800 kilowatt hours. And so that is less than a thousand. So theoretically possible here. If Tesla does come out and say that the battery capacity of the semi is 800 kilowatt hours or less, I would then be skeptical of it actually achieving that 500 mile range uh, because in the best case scenario, that's basically the absolute minimum it would need in order to do it. Now, if we look at a harder scenario, so now we have this Tesla Semi again, fully loaded. And for of those 500 miles, uh, for 20% of that, it's gonna be going up a 1% grade. So for 100 miles, a 1% grade, uh, then you have a drag coefficient of 0.5, I think, this is still really good, so don't think that this is some crazy high number. It's still very good, but just consider that you don't have this perfect trailer uh, that matches, and so your drag coefficient's a bit higher. Frontal area, as we've gotten there, we're traveling at 70 miles per hour. That seems more realistic for a semi-truck. We're gonna say the rolling resistance coefficient is slightly higher. We're gonna say our efficiency is 90%, still really good. Again, you have to consider auxiliary things that you're running. So, you know, uh, running the heat in the cabin or things like that. Uh, if you have wind, so we're gonna say we have a 10 mile per hour headwind for this drive and uh, we're spending some time accelerating and decelerating. So we have to account for inertia in this equation. Well, if you do this, this scenario, which isn't unfeasible, right? I mean, this certainly could happen. These are not numbers that are just like, oh, that's crazy. I never would a semi truck ever encounter these scenarios. If you do the math there, well, that gives you about 2000 kilowatt hours of required energy, meaning the actual range of this truck in these conditions is just 250 miles rather than 500. So Tesla's 500 mile per hour claim, I think is possible assuming it is a 1000 kilowatt hour uh, battery, but I wouldn't say in all scenarios uh, that you're going to see that. Uh, certainly you can see how easily that number can be less. Now, the benefit that Tesla has going for them in these calculations is that they do it at full load. It is rare that trucks out there on the road are actually all you know, driving with full load. The average is underneath that. So if we were to look at a scenario uh, like this ideal scenario here and we take out 30,000 pounds, so the total weight is just 52,000 pounds of between cargo and the truck and batteries, et cetera, then we're down to 640 kilowatt hours needed in order to achieve that. So you can see that if your load goes down, it does make a huge impact on how much energy you use because so much of the energy does go to rolling resistance in these tires. So next we get to weight and power. Both of these variables Tesla does not provide to us. However, super cool, we can calculate both of them. Weight, pretty easy, and power, a bit more challenging, but we will figure it out. So Tesla provides some information that allows us to calculate these two variables. Why? Because they told us an 80,000 pound mass, this was before uh, legislation had allowed for 82,000. So an 80,000 pound truck is able to accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 20 seconds. Now, a truck of unknown weight without the trailer is able to accelerate to 60 miles per hour in five seconds. Well, this is super easy to figure out. Force equals mass times acceleration. We've done something in a fourth of the time, meaning our acceleration is multiplied by four, which means we have one fourth of the mass. So our Tesla Semi, according you know, to their reveal video, is going to weigh about 20 thousand pounds. Uh, so there you have it. Now we want to discover how much horsepower does this truck have? Well, we know the amount of work done. Work is force times distance. So this truck applies a certain force to drive a certain distance, right? 
And if you take that work and you divide it by time, because we know how much time we spent, well, that gives you power. Power is work over time. So we have force times distance divided by time. We can substitute force for mass times acceleration. We can substitute distance for one half acceleration times time squared, because we know our acceleration, that's 60 miles per hour in 20 seconds. Uh, and so you can simplify that all down into this equation here. Once you plug those in, one half mass times time times acceleration squared. So we have all those variables. We know our mass, we know our time, we know 60 miles per hour in 20 seconds is the same as 1.34 meters per second squared. So that tells us the amount of power required in this scenario is about 650 kilowatts or about 870 horsepower. Now I have an asterisk here because this is the absolute minimum you would need to do it. You're not taking into consideration efficiency, you're not taking into consideration you know the rotational inertia for all these tires, things like that. So you're looking at around a thousand horsepower for this thing to be able to do what they claim of 0 to 60 in 20 seconds. And yeah, the math checks out. Tesla's capable of thousand horsepower. Uh, that all is very possible. Possible. All right, next we get to charging rate. This one is very simple and easy to verify. So Tesla says they can charge this battery, this massive battery, 70% uh, in 30 minutes. And so the thing is with battery charging, that is simply limited to the cell, right? So you can have a ton of cells and you can still charge all of them at the same rate. You just need more power to do it. So it isn't crazy. They're already doing, you know, 70% of a battery charge in 30 minutes. So that is not anything to be concerned with. Uh, it is a high level of power that is going into the vehicle. So that's 700 kilowatt hours in 30 minutes if you assume a thousand kilowatt hour battery pack, which means the charging rate is 1400 kilowatts. That's about six to 10 times what their current superchargers are doing. So they're going to have these semi chargers uh, that are capable of much faster charging rates, uh, very high power and like liquid cooled sleeves and stuff like that. Wild tech. But point is they're going to be pumping a ton of power into that semi to charge it up quickly. And it is feasible. It still means, you know, you have to have access to these chargers in order to do it. Uh, but the math is very feasible there. Okay, next let's get into cost per mile. And we're just gonna be looking at fuel versus energy here uh, versus a diesel truck. Uh, I don't know what the price of this Tesla Semi is gonna be. Often that comes down to whatever business they're negotiating with when they're selling it. Uh, at one point they said $180,000 for this truck. Who knows? Point is we can do a little math and see whether or not per mile if any of this makes any sense. So if you look at the wholesale price for industrial electricity within the United States, uh, it's about nine cents per kilowatt hour. If you look at diesel, uh, wholesale price in the US is about $4.20. It seems like uh, Elon would recommend diesel in this case if it was actually $4.20. Uh, but that's price of diesel as of when I'm recording this average for the US wholesale. Now efficiency, Tesla, we're going to go with their 0.5 mile per kilowatt hour claim. And the average uh, class eight truck within the United States is getting 5.29 miles per gallon. So we're going to say that both of these go for a million miles. That's what Tesla says they're going to guarantee their powertrain for. Uh, and it's not uncommon for one of these diesel vehicles to also travel a million miles in its lifetime. It's pretty impressive versus, you know, production cars, how much longer these things last. So what is the price in each of these scenarios? Well, for the Tesla, you multiply that all out, you get $188,600 that you will spend purely on electricity. Uh, and for the diesel, you're at $793,950. So if these are the actual prices you're paying for one or the other, it's like abundantly clear uh, that you should go electric if you have the capability to do it and the charging infrastructure, all that. So if you can actually get electricity for this price and make it work out, yeah, it's insane uh, to go diesel. Tesla in their video said they're going to guarantee seven cents per kilowatt hour for these semi chargers. If they actually do that, great, take them up on it. I have uh, my skepticism that they'll actually be offering that. 
And if you look at retail prices that some of us pay uh, for like superchargers within the United States, that can be above 50 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you were to ever actually have to pay these prices, I mean, if you multiply that all out, then you're at a million dollars in electricity if your per kilowatt hour price is 50 cents. So then it favors the diesel if the electricity gets really expensive. So as long as you're paying industrial electricity prices, great, you can make it work out and actually a huge leap. Even even if you need to replace the battery, considering you know if the price of the truck is anywhere around here, or if you have to replace the entire truck. So if the price is anywhere near this, uh, and fuel prices and energy prices or anything like that, math checks out heavily in favor of Tesla. So our final subject, do the emissions check out? Because this is of course what Tesla is pushing for. They're saying, you know, by switching from diesel to electric, you're gonna have far better CO2 emissions. So if we look at our well to wheel CO2 emissions, meaning everything required in order to use that certain amount of energy within the vehicle for the Tesla, that is 0.53 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour. That includes transmission losses, that includes charging losses. Uh, so our well to wheel number there. And then for diesel, 12 kilograms of CO2 emitted for every Every gallon of diesel burned and that includes production of that diesel fuel extraction all that stuff so if we look at the mass contribution of the trucks of course we have you know what does it take in order to create these vehicles and then what does it take to run them so we're going to go with the assumption of 5,000 kilograms of CO2 per ton of vehicle. This is not including the battery. And then the CO2 emissions of the battery, we're gonna go with uh, somewhat of an average within the industry of 150 kilograms per kilowatt hour. Tesla says their number is much better than this, about 70 kilograms per kilowatt hour, but we're gonna go with the higher estimate just to kind of be on the safe side here. So if we look at the lifetime emissions of CO2, for these vehicles, including production and use, uh, we get to the perfect scenario here uh, for Tesla, just production and assuming all energy is from renewable sources and you have zero emissions associated with driving, then you just have 175,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions. Uh, not really achievable uh, because you know there's gonna be some emissions associated with creating solar power, wind power, whatever, uh, but far lower number, so it can approach this perfect scenario right here. Realistically, using the average mix of electricity within the United States, uh, so we, if we go with average USA, we're looking at 1,235,000 kilograms of CO2 emitted to travel those million miles for this vehicle. And then finally, if we get to our diesel example here, uh, so our last one, diesel, we're looking at 2,310,000 thousand kilograms total uh, CO2 emissions. So what's a little disappointing to me is that using the average US mix, we're only cutting emissions in half. That's obviously great. I mean, it's great to cut emissions in half, but it could be a lot more impactful depending on where the energy comes from. And so that's kind of the whole point, right? If we improve the energy sources, we can make a huge difference using this technology in emissions reductions. So. Overall, if you look at all the elements of this, I was quite surprised that there didn't seem to be some fatal flaw uh, from a theoretical standpoint in the Tesla Semi. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.